guys, Ryan from Motorcycle.com, fresh off of a YCRS track school. Wanted to come out and get some more track time, so we're out here with two-wheel track days. And uh, looking at the market, Kawasaki and Yamaha are really the only two manufacturers to do a little bit of updating to their 600 line. So we got a hold of Kawasaki's ZX6R and the Yamaha R6. With these two bikes, you know, I'm kind of a novice track rider. I haven't been doing this that much. I'm not racing. And so I kind of wanted to give you my thoughts on these two bikes, given my experience level. Because, you know, it, it makes a big difference whether you're out there dragging your elbow or if you're newer to track days. The sport bike market isn't exactly booming the way it used to be, but Kawasaki ZX6R and Yamaha's R6 are two of the most recently updated, not, not thoroughly redesigned, but updated bikes. So we got a hold of both of these and wanted to get out here and look at two of the most current uh, 600s on the market. And I wanted to give you my thoughts on how I felt doing track days on both these bikes. Well, that wraps up our track day here out at Chuckwalla. Um, again, thanks to Two Wheel Track Days, had a great time. Uh, I feel pretty lucky that I got to come out here and work on my own skills and test a couple bikes and kind of give you guys my feedback as a novice track rider. So um, after doing what do we do, maybe five, five, six sessions, something like that today, um, earlier in the day, I really, I kind of surprised myself and I thought my mind was made up already because I was going so well on the Kawasaki, I got really comfortable really quickly. Um, I had actually spent more time on the R6 on tracks previously, you know, a handful of schools and whatnot, um, but the Kawasaki just immediately was a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit longer, it's uh, according to the manufacturer weight claims, um, this is 430 pounds, this is 419, so the Kawasaki is a little heavier, it's a little longer. Um, has a little bit uh, less steep rake on it, so the, the whole thing kind of felt a little more stable when I was throwing it into the corners. And yeah, it was a little slower to turn in, but it just, it kind of jived with me pretty quickly uh, and just, yeah, I, I think that's maybe part partly due to the fact that I'm a little bit newer at this. The stability was just, uh, made me feel a little bit more at home right away so I could kind of start pushing a little faster and a little uh, more quickly with the Kawasaki. That being said, I think between the two, also something that kind of stuck out to me initially was the, the brakes, the front brakes. On the Kawi, it you have a little bit more travel in the lever, but to me it was just able, I was able to modulate it a little more easily. The Yamaha has a really stiff front brake and that initial bite isn't quite there as much as I would have liked it to be. It has plenty of stopping power once you get into it, but you kind of got to work it for it a little bit. But after spinning laps, you know, I was just kind of going back and forth between the two bikes. And my last session on the Yamaha, I ended up going faster and faster. I felt more comfortable through that entire session and felt myself getting more comfortable uh, exponentially. So I think given more time, I would feel just as comfortable on the R6. I think what it boils down to is the R6 is a little shorter. It's a little lighter, a little bit steeper rake, and it kind of can feel a little twitchy. Uh, not quite as stable maybe as the Kawasaki does. So it's it's quicker to kind of flick around and tighter sections of the track, it's really nimble and really easy to move around. Um, but it kind of took me a little bit more getting up to speed, getting comfortable with the day, having more sessions under my belt and a little more, more time under my belt with these two, uh, specifically the Yamaha. One thing that's also of note is the, uh, the throttle response seemed a little bit smoother on the Kawasaki, whereas on the Yamaha, it maybe was a little bit more abrupt and, and that was even in standard mode. Um, when Troy Sihan did his review of the 2017 model, he actually mentioned that A is maybe even too abrupt for more novice riders, but between these two, I still found that the R6 had a little bit more of a just abrupt throttle, and the Kawasaki was a little bit easier to be smoother with. Thankfully, we were we had these both on equal footing with the Metzler Racetech RRs, which heated up super quick, were really tacky, uh, pretty confidence-inspiring, which made a huge difference for me again. Uh, just the more comfortable you feel and knowing that you've got good rubber and whatnot, that, that helps out quite a bit too. So thanks Metzler for that. So engine characteristics, Cowie's got a, a 636cc engine, so it's a little bit bigger. You know, they call it a cheater engine in the 600 class, but uh, 
it does have more torque and more horsepower and again the Cowie does have a little bit of a bigger engine and uh, I think the Kawasaki is actually hitting its peak horsepower about a thousand revs lower at 13.5 whereas the Yamaha is at 14.5. The Yamaha you can kind of rev the engine out a little bit more um, I think it's got about 500 rpm more to redline um, but that being said with the Kawasaki that bigger engine kind of helps you pull out of corners it feels like it has a little bit more mid-range so you can be a little bit lazier with shifting and whatnot and it's got that grunt down low uh, in sport bike terms down low so kind of in that mid-range. The ZX6R also comes with a quick shifter up only. Um, that being said the Yamaha doesn't have any quick shifter on it you can get one as an accessory but it is nice that the Kawasaki comes with it. One thing, uh, again, Troy noted this in his review, but the ignition cut for the Kawasaki is a bit too long. It kind of lurches back and takes a minute to, to get flipped into the next gear. So honestly, it's not the best quick shifter in the world, but it is nice that it's there. So again, I think kind of keeping with the theme, that, you know, obviously these are both sport bikes, but if, if one was going to be sportier, it's definitely the Yamaha. Um, it just feels more flickable. Uh, just it's, it's, it feels lighter in transitions. It's got a more aggressive seating position. So if you're considering the, one of these for your, your only bike, maybe the Kawasaki would get the nod because the R6 riding position is very aggressive. Um, and that kind of comes through in the suspension characteristics I felt today too. The Kawasaki was a little bit, a little bit more plush. Um, didn't ever do anything weird for me on the track. I thought it was fine. Uh, I, I would probably make some tweaks, some settings and whatnot as I went. Uh, but I would start with what it has on it because it's got adjustable uh, suspension up front and, and in the rear. The Yamaha out of the box is quite a bit stiffer at suspension, uh, both front and rear. Again, it's fully adjustable, so you can tweak that, and you know, if you need to change spring rates, you can do that too. So all these things can be adjusted, especially if you're planning on doing track days all the time. Uh, these are things you're gonna tweak to make yourself more comfortable on the track. Uh, Evans asked me who was the winner earlier, and uh, I kind of feel like I'm the winner here because I got to come out here and ride both these bikes at the track. As far as one, which, which bike would I take uh, to do track days on? It's difficult because I came in and I got a few sessions under my belt on the Cowie and I, I kept telling Evans, I was like, this is crazy. I, I thought I really liked the R6, but I had so much fun on the Kawasaki. And Evans even told me, he's like, you look more comfortable on that uh, immediately. And until this last session, I might've still agreed with that. But this last session, I kind of started, I think riding the Yamaha a little bit more like it was supposed to be ridden and kind of using that flickability and just getting used to the bike because something that we have to do in my line of work is be adaptable and we have to adapt to these motorcycles. And I think it just took me a little bit longer on the Yamaha. Uh, I mean, if you look at what people are racing in Moto America and stuff like that, there's tons of R6s. Uh, so, you know, it's a solid platform for sure. Um, but again, the Ninja was something I went out, I came out here and felt comfortable on right away. So it really depends on what your goal is. If you want to do track days, I think if you want to start racing, maybe, maybe that's the difference. Maybe the Cowie would be better for casual track days and you can work on the uh, R6 and get it to where you want maybe faster, just because it has more agility maybe. Um, as you progress, you could probably use that more, uh, but that's not to, not to put down the Ninja at all because you could do the same, same tweaks. Again, things you're gonna do, tweak the bike, whatever it's gonna be, suspension brakes, all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of options for both of these bikes out there so really you probably can't go wrong with either one but there is one big sticking point uh, and that's price um, Kawasaki came up with this kind of slightly revised uh, bike in 2019 and they brought it out at a price point of 10 grand for the non ABS model for a thousand dollars more you can add ABS to that uh, and the Yamaha is coming in at 12 too so for 2200 bucks that you save with the Kawasaki, you can probably do a, a fair bit of work um, and maybe get it set up the way you want it. So definitely something to consider. So for me today, I think overall, because it didn't take me all day to get super comfortable, I picked the Kawasaki. Uh, I had a good time, started dragging knees on that thing fairly quickly. And uh, I definitely would, I would go out and do sessions on both of these, but I'd be happy to get back out there on the Cowie. And uh, thanks to Two Wheel Track Days for having us out here. Thanks to Metzler for providing the uh, Racetech RRs. These are these were the K1 compound, by the way. 
And thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we'll have the article with a little bit with the full spec sheets for these two bikes side by side. A little bit more of my thoughts after I've had a chance to digest them a bit more. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching.